So the general election campaign is in full swing and we all know what you need to win an election, don't we? Reason to bet, a balanced discussion on important policy issues, heartfelt promises for the future, but most importantly, loads of spin. So this election, all the parties know they'll need a well-oiled PR machine with more marketing savvy than Coca-Cola and Pepsi put together. It's really no different for cars, you know. Some things just spin better than others. Take this for example, the Nissan Almera 1.8 Sport Plus, a car that would test the medical skills of the world's most gifted spin doctors. When the first Almera was launched in 1995, it was billed as the car they don't want you to drive. And you know what? No one did. Nissan lacked spin. The Almera was always a very capable car, but the damage had been done. When this latest version was launched last year, you lot still weren't keen on it. In fact, when the votes were counted, the Ford Focus outsold the Almera 6 to 1. But let me tell you here and now that it's really rather agreeable to drive. The steering is very accurate, and while the ride is admittedly on the firm side, what I would say to you is that a firm ride is a good ride and a ride that's good for the country. Furthermore, that's a price well worth paying for such tidy handling, even if it isn't quite as razor sharp as a Ford Focus. But according to our JD Power survey, you rated the last Almera 37 places above the Focus. Nissan has a knack for building reliable cars that even handle well, but look rather dull, racy surf tail roof line notwithstanding. Dowdy appearance isn't something the Mitsubishi Galant Sport has to worry about. OK, so it's currently residing on the back benches, but judging by its appearance, it really should have a much bigger majority. The public have stayed cool to its rakish charm, though, which is why it finds itself exiled on the extreme wing of the party. So, the Prince of Darkness's image consultants have been at work on the Galant's exterior. Inside, well, I'm afraid it would make an absolutely terrible politician. It's just too straight, honest and true. The ergonomics are simple, the plastics are high grade. Ask it some more probing questions while you're driving, though, and the Galant reveals a steeliness that knocks the Vauxhall Vector, for example, into a cocked hat. It's two-litre, 134 brake horsepower engine. Um, spins smoothly all the way to the red line and its handling offers you a balanced and objective assessment of what's going on on the road. Blimey, I really do sound like a politician. Right? And while its lantern-jawed looks pulverise the dreary old Vectras, the polls show that Vauxhall still have the commanding majority, shifting a mighty 70,000 of them last year, compared with Mitsubishi's wimpy tally of 1,900 gallants. But we've saved the best, or should that be the worst, to last. Yes, the prize for the least dazzling spin job of the lot goes to the said Toledo. At 17 grand, the Toledo V5 is over two and a half thousand pounds cheaper than its similarly specified running mate, the Volkswagen Bora. But the cunning marketing manifesto seems to be Seat isn't selling. At the heart of the Toledo's charm offensive is its recently upgraded and very persuasive 170 brake horsepower V5 engine. So let's be very clear about this, shall we? It's got more power now, it produces less emissions, and yet it's more economical as well. Well, that gets my vote. I don't know about you. Factor in some electrically operated Alcantara seats, a CD changer, climate control, and a key that memorizes both your seating and mirror positions. And what we are looking at here is a very, very appealing candidate. It's also 600 pounds cheaper than the car it replaces. Ah, oh, that can't be bad. That's almost as good as a tax cut. So, why did only 2,000 of you vote for, sorry, buy this car last year? Probably because you're not on message. Neither the Galant, the Almera, nor the Toledo are part of the in crowd, which is precisely what makes them stand out from the crowd. Their very lack of image is what's so refreshing about them. So, a vote for one of these three is a vote for common sense above all else. It's a vote against needless hype and spin. 
Thanks for listening. Still to come on Top Gear, second-hand legend buying a Mini Cooper. The Mercedes A-Class has stretched. But first, the Top Gear verdict.